In the 60s, when the movement started, 60s and 70s, in America, drug dealing and prostitution and meat eating were all sky high. So there was one drug dealer whom the cops were chasing. And he was escaping the cops and running helter-skelter pillar post. And as he was running, he saw on the street a Hare Krishna party, chanting Kirtan party. So he thought this is a good life-saving mechanism. Just get into them and they will make sure that you don't get out. <laughs> because the devotee community in a transcendental way is like a mafia. Why? Mafia is a place where you can go on your own. But once you come in, you know so much that you can't leave. They won't let you leave. So we all become devotees on our own accord. We enter the spiritual organization on our own accord. But now that we have learned so much philosophy, even if we decide to go out, we cannot enjoy. Because we say, okay, I'm going to give up bhakti and just watch a movie. You put the TV. Next channel. Matras parishas tu kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukkhada aghama pa hino nitya standiti kshaswabharata. This person switches off the, off the TV and says, Let me as well go to the temple. <laughs> so it's like a mafia. You can come in, but even if you want, you can't leave because Krishna holds you like that. So this drug dealer just entered the Sankirtan party to escape the cops. The cops were running behind him and suddenly they couldn't find him because he disappeared. And there's a Hare Krishna party, dancing Sankirtan party with flags and posters. And as the cops van moved by, because they thought this is not the drug dealer where he is, this is the devotee community. So this person tried to leave the devotion, the Sankirtan. But you know how devotees are. He tried to escape from this side. He said, hey, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> he pushed him to another side. So he tried to escape from that side. And devotees said, hey, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. <laughs> Why are you frowning? Be happy. So he tried escaping from ahead and the devotee ahead said, hey, chant Hare Krishna, don't leave. One human form, why are you leaving? So then he was just smothered there. Performing Kirtan in that assembly, he reached the temple. Now the cops were a little suspicious. They thought maybe he escaped in. So the cops van, the police van was standing outside the temple. Now this person is in a fix because he entered the temple, he cannot exit. Because if he exits, the cops will catch him. He went and told the temple president, I want to join your temple. <laughs> the temple president called the lead singer of the Harinam party. And he said, amazing singing. Such pure chanting. People are coming and saying they want to join full time. You should do kirtan every day. And the lead singer felt very good about himself. He said, okay, this is a very good... Policy. Now this person, drug dealer who entered the temple, he didn't know what he was getting into. He thought he can be comfortable. This is the life of lazy people. That's what he thought. But next morning, 3.30, he was woken up. Hey, Jeeva Jago, Jeeva Jago, Gaura Chandra Bole. I'm not saying Gaura Chandra is saying, a drug dealer is thinking, who's this Gaura Chandra? <laughs> wake up, wake up, you got to bathe. She thought, okay. This is the custom. He went there. Then there was a big line. Only one bathroom at that time. So 3.30 in the morning, there's a big queue. And he's waiting, 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 waiting. He thought it will be an, you know, like a very opulent, luxury bathroom. Where that's why there's a big queue. So he entered cold water. In the middle of winter. So he's thinking to himself, where is the heater? And as he's thinking, devotees are knocking, hey, Shri Vigraha Ara Chalu Eudar. The third verse of Guru Ashtak is going on, come out. So he doesn't know what's happening. He just took two mugs and he came out. He went down. Everybody's standing and staring at some statue. And they forcefully put him a dhoti. He thought, what is this diaper that they have put me? <laughs> then he went there. And he was standing. And at that time, devotees are saying, Swami step, Swami step. Now, he doesn't know what the Swami step is. So he starts looking around and he's swinging and moving his legs at 3.34 in the morning. Then he thought, after this, they let me go to sleep. 
this got over narsimharati they are keeping a big picture of narsinga devi with blood and intestine so he asked one devotee what is this the devotee said if you don't sing louder this is what will happen to you <laughs> He said the last devotee didn't sing loudly in our temple so he's there on the lap on that picture. <laughs> so you better sing loudly. So this person started singing loudly. Then he thought they'll let him go. After that everybody starts circumambulating a plant. At 5 o'clock in the morning what is this? And everybody is walking one after another after another after another. Some were doing 11 parikramas also. So he asked someone how many rounds to do the devotee said till the time you don't faint keep doing <laughs> so he continued doing continued doing then he thought finally i'll get to sleep but the actual challenge began after that <laughs> the japa time began so everybody picked up their beads and put it in the bead bag and put one finger out <laughs> and chanting like this and wherever he is looking everybody is doing this <laughs> No it's you it's you and he starts thinking maybe they know that i am the criminal i am the drug dealer it's you yes it's you it's you everybody knows it's you so he asked one person what is this and you know why are they all pointing towards me and the devotee said because you are the only one not chanting they are all pointing he is the one he is the one so you better start chanting they gave him beads gave him a bag now he thought chanting on the beads is all too much now you know he has no clue what this culture is so he said let me do it but not do it he kept the beads aside put his hand into the empty bead bag <laughs> with his finger coming out and he also starts walking no it's not me it's you <laughs> it's you and it's you and it's you and it's you and he starts walking with an empty bead bag some devotee starts saying how much taste he is having first day he is walking walking they don't know it's an empty bead bag and he didn't know for how long this was going to go 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes 1 hour 2 hours and then he heard some devotee say no one more hour left he said what is this he said no i'm chanting extra round so one more hour i have to chant so this person got scared then he thought i have to go to sleep now no but then the curtains opened and again everybody starts govinda madi purusham he has no clue what is being sung and then after that everybody turns towards prabhupad's deity and then this loud kirtan he was thinking oh my god all this from 330 this is too much <laughs> then he thought i could sleep and he was right it was bhagavatam class why are you looking at me like this <laughs> so then the bhagavatam class began and he started falling asleep the devotee next said if you fall asleep no prasad whatever we did you have to do again now he said no better be awake and he finished all that then prasadam then he was happy oh now after meal you can go to sleep temple president comes to him and he says this is your kartal and this is your murdanga and these are the books go out for 14 hour book distribution go out at least 12 hour you should do go at 9 am come back at 9 pm do kirtan all day at the street and give out bhagavad gita to everyone do this so he said 12 hours he started doing this started coming out at coming back at 9 pm day 1 day 2 day 3 day 4 day 5 day 6 after 6 months he came to the temple president he thought now this is too much let me speak the truth to him he told the temple president prabhu ji i am not the person you think i am the temple president said wonderful this is our philosophy we are not this body we are spirits <laughs> self realization in 6 months i am not what you think i am wow very deep you are not the body your spirit so amazing who's preaching to you the person said prabhu ji your level is too high i want to be truthful to you 
said, I'm a drug dealer and this is my story. I wanted to escape the cops and I got into the kirtan and that's how I came to the temple, fearing the cops and now it's getting too much for me. Temple president said, you're a drug dealer and you're living at the temple? My place is at stake now. Why do you want to be here? The drug dealer said, I want to surrender to Krishna. Temple president said, before surrendering to Krishna, first you surrender to the cops. Surrender to the police. So the temple president called the police. The police came, took him. Then there was a court case on him. They put him on the witness box and started asking him questions. The police came. The judge started asking, so what do you do? He said, I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Then what do you do? I stand in the queue. Then what do you do? I take a cold water bath with knocks on the door. Then what do you do? I do the same step for 30 minutes. <laughs> then what do you do? Walk around a plant till I faint. <laughs> then what do you do? I walk with an empty bag without beads for two hours. <laughs> then what do you do? I forcefully give up sleep and sit in a boring class. <laughs> then what do you do? I honor Prasadam and walk on the street for 12 hours a day. The judge told the cops, Chhod do isko. Let him go. Cop said, we have struggled so much to catch him. Why do you want him to go? The judge said, his life is more miserable than the prisoners inside. <laughs> inside they are better. He is struggling more. <laughs> he has struggled enough for six months. We will forgive him. So this person came back to the temple, joined the temple, became initiated and now he is one of our ISKCON leaders. I wouldn't tell you the name. But this personality, when he was giving a class, he himself said a very beautiful realization. He said what the judge thought was worse than the prison life was actually the perfect life to purify me. And he said, how did I get uplifted? Because I kept myself in power-packed association. I had no way to go. If I leave them, the cops will catch me. So out of force, yena kena prakarena, I kept myself in devotee association and by the spiritual vibrations coming from their side, my consciousness got purified.